Hi everyone, we're coming to you live on Facebook. I'm Ashley, Education Developer here at Blick Art Materials. I'm super excited to bring you this very special Beetle Ink painting demo. We're going to be using FW acrylic inks with a traditional pen and nib on an ampersand clay board. Uh, as an added bonus, we have a couple of uh, goodies for you. First of all, we're giving away a free $100 Blick e-gift card. So if you like this post and you follow us um, and also uh, share a comment and let us know what is your favorite subject to draw or sketch and you will be eligible to win that $100 e-gift card. You can take that gift card and you can check out all the supplies that we're using here this evening on our bundle page. Uh, and uh, we'll be going through all the unique qualities of all of our products. Um, but our second added bonus is that we do now have a printable downloadable template available for you if you want to follow along. So this is uh, an incredibly easy way to do a quick transfer process so that you can get an accurate drawing right on your clay board without a lot of guessing and checking. So make sure you check that out. Um, and we're going to um, explore a lot of different drawing processes today and we're going to do our best to answer all the questions that you might have out there in the audience about ink drawing, drawing in general, um, including your favorite things to draw. So let's go ahead and get started without further ado. So I, like I said, I'm working on this 8x10 clay board. It has an ultra smooth surface and it's incredibly absorbent um, in a certain way, which we'll see once we start using these inks. I'm using the FW acrylic pigmented inks um, and these are going to give us really nice um, a nice combination of transparent and opaque coverage so we'll explore how to do some uh, cross hatching and highlights and line variation all along the way so stick around um, we're going to be using a traditional pen and nib drawing process, which many of you may not already be familiar with. Um, if you are, uh, you probably have fallen in love with it, just like me. <laughs> I think it's a really nice effect. Uh, it's a really nice way to draw uh, and to create technical drawings um, because you can get a very high level of detail. So when you're using the acrylic inks, make sure you give them a nice shake. A little bit of separation is normal, but you shouldn't have to worry about it too much. I'm going to go ahead and use the ink right out of the wells as we make this drawing here today. Other things that I have that are handy are a small container for water as well as some paper towels. Once we're all done with our ink drawing, uh, we're going to do a little bit of carving. The clay board has a special quality that you can carve away similar to uh, a linoleum block, so we're going to see how that works as well. All right, so the first thing that we're going to want to do, like I said, if you're using uh, this drawing template, you can just run over with a regular graphite pencil on this template. Once you've coated that whole thing, flip it over, and then you're going to go back over that outline, and that's just a quick transfer process. All right, I've already transferred my drawing onto this board, so I can go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see, so I'm just going to, um, and you literally just set the nib right into the nib holder, which is the black piece that I'm holding here. And I want to make sure that there's not too much ink on my drawing nib, so I'm just going to do a couple test spots. And I'm going to go ahead and apply a light, even pressure onto my board to just make this very simple outline. So you don't have to press too hard. So all of you pen and ink fans who are doing drawing challenges this October, this is a great way to expand your practice into drawing. And we're going to just take a little bit of time. And while I'm doing this, don't forget um, about our e-gift card giveaway that you can easily enter for. Drop us a comment to enter, letting us know what your favorite subject is to sketch or draw, as well as liking our post and following us. All right. And I can make this 
aspect of my drawing as detailed or simple as possible. I do think it's nice to start off with a simple outline. And the scarab beetle is our subject for this drawing. And I've chosen the scarab because, as you can see um, in our artwork samples, they have um, a very signature color about them. Um, they have that beautiful, shiny, multi-tonal um, exoskeleton. And it's absolutely fascinating and um, very uh, easy to tell what it is. So I think it's a nice subject for this season. It's a little creepy crawly. So it kind of fits with our October time frame. This ink um, that I'm putting down will dry pretty quickly because right now it's in a pretty thin layer. But once we start laying it on here, and we're going to do a little bit of a fluid painting technique, so stick around for all the fun parts once we get this outline created. Um, and you'll see that um, they are incredibly versatile, and they have some great coverage. Now I know that a traditional pen and nib looks a little intimidating, um, it looks different than maybe something that you've used before, and um, I know that it's easy to get caught up in thinking about making things perfect, or messing up, or whoop, like that. <laughs> okay. We'll work with that. But they're incredibly forgiving, and um, I don't mind my little splatter. It's a good lesson for us. Um, that you don't want to have too much ink on that nib. Fortunately, these colors are opaque and I'm going to be able to layer over them. Also, as a note, probably roll your sleeves up once you're getting started in this kind of drawing process because you don't want to smudge things around too much. All right, and we're getting close, and this is nice and quick. So not too, too worried here. Okay, once we get this layer down, we're going to start to add in some fun colors to our highlights. And let's just do this last piece here. Okay. Stephanie's wondering, is the tip, um, is, the, is this a narrow nib or the round? This is a narrow nib. This is not a round nib um, like you might use for calligraphy or hand lettering. Um, this is a nib where, um, and actually I'm going to show you, I'm glad that um, Stephanie brought up the nib. She's wondering if it's round or if it's narrow. I'm just going to show you a couple of quick techniques here. Now that we've got our outline down and um, we've seen more techniques than planned for, but let me just show you. So um, if you want to test the line variation of your nib, uh, especially these in particular where uh, you release ink slowly as you draw out your line, uh, you can just test using different amounts of pressure. So here I'm just going to apply a little more pressure in the second line. And you can easily see that that's how we get this line variation. I'm gonna go a little harder, and now it's really coming out. And that can be used to cover larger areas, but still pretty much meant for detail, okay? The other quick thing that I want to demonstrate before we move on is a little bit of cross hatching. Cross-hatching is absolutely elemental um, to drawing practice, and uh, it's an incredibly easy way to get shading, and um, you'll never forget it once you pick it up. So if you want to practice cross-hatching, I've just got a little square here. 
All right, so a little drawing 101. If you want to cross hatch, it means that you make lines that go in one direction, and then you cross over those lines with lines going in a different direction. And the idea is, if you want more shading in a certain area, then you cross hatch more in that area. And as you continue to build over it, you can see that you get some easy shading. So keep that in mind when you're making your ink drawing or when you're drawing in general, um, that line variation and cross hatching can take you a long way. Okay, do we have another question? Do. So okay. Uh, Crystal's actually wondering how you keep the nibs from rusting. Yeah, that's a great question. The nibs are actually really easy to take care of. What's our guest's name? Crystal. Um, Crystal is wanting to know how do you keep the nibs from getting rusty. They are metal and you are cleaning them with water and you're using them with an acrylic ink. And so I think that um, the easiest way is to keep your nibs clean while you're working. So if you're using water, you can even use a little bit um, a small amount of soap um, uh, in your water just to make sure that things don't get clogged. But in general, as you're using it, I, I have never uh, had too much of an issue as long as I keep it clean before and after I use it. So um, definitely just not letting the ink dry in the nib uh, is number one. The more you let that ink sit on the metal, the more it's going to kind of corrode. So. Um, Let's keep moving and let's start to add some color to our drawing. Um, I'm going to start working with the red and um, I'm going to do a little bit of a fluid painting process and we'll just um, lay it in. And I'm just using the bottle cap basically, um, the dropper that comes with the ink because I can cover a large area without having to just use my nib. So keep in mind that this ink might stay wet for quite some time. So only use as much as you need and just be mindful that when you're putting in new layers of ink, it may be a little wet. Mary's wondering, is acrylic ink just very thin acrylic paint? Uh, Mary is wanting to know, is acrylic ink just very thin acrylic paint? And um, not exactly uh, in the sense that you might think that it's just mixed with water. Um, it is mixed with a different, um, rather combined with a different vehicle. And actually, let me just take a look to see if it's going to tell us without spending too much time. Can we double check that? Um, with our product specialist team perhaps and see what um, this unique binder is for these acrylic inks but um, they are thinned but and they have properties of acrylic paint such as being water resistant but um, I think we on a more cellular level could find out a little bit more about um, what exactly that binder is. With acrylic paints it's um, a polymer emulsion so um, Let's find out more, that's a really good question. All right, um, so I've laid in a little bit of color and I put that in first because I want that to set up. And now I'm gonna go back to my outline and I'm going to um, just start to spruce up and color all of these fascinating joints. And I'm using this purple pearlescent color, which is absolutely beautiful um, because it not only has that opaque coverage, but it's giving us a lot of shine. So that adds some texture. And um, I do tend to be somewhat of a texture person. I like seeing it. I like knowing how the uh, materials are reacting to one another. So this is a great project if you are wanting to get a lot of um, interesting drawing textures. So I'm using, oh I'm sorry, do we have another question? Yeah, 
Oh, yep. I was just going to let... Um, Jessica is wondering... She, she's never used Clayboard before, and she was wondering how it differ differs from using other boards and surfaces. Jessica is wanting to know more about the Clayboard and... Um, how it differs from using other boards. And how it differs from using other boards and surfaces. And it is completely unique. Um, thank you for asking this question about the clay board. So um, what's, what's nice about the clay board for this process is that it is ultra smooth. Um, but I will also say that when fluids such as water or inks or alcohol inks or what have you are applied to the clay board, the clay board wants to soak it up, um, but also uh, become very soft. So it's almost as if um, you have an unfired ceramic clay that's dried out that you add water back into and you reconstitute the clay. It's kind of that same texture. So um, the surface becomes soft and uh, workable. So it's um, a surface that you can carve on, um, draw on, um, uh, paint on. You can really do anything. Um, it's not a quick drying surface, so it's not something where, you know, it's not like a watercolor board, um, so I don't necessarily recommend it for watercolors. But um, if you're looking for a unique project board that's going to give you a lot of texture and kind of a different experience with your drawing, I think that it's going to be a really good option. Um, yeah, I, I think it's definitely uh, worth exploring if you've never tried it before. Ampersand has a lot of really amazing um, project surfaces for artists to work with and, um, you know, gesso board clay board, watercolor board, and caustic board um, that are all meant to do something specific depending on what medium you're using. So I highly recommend. Now I do think I have a little bit of a clog, so I'm going to make sure that you're keeping water running through that nib uh, because these are pigmented. So you just want to be sure. Um, we have another question. Okay, we have another question. Joyce would like to know if you recommend wetting the surface before applying the ink. A good question. Joyce would like to know if the surface should be wet before you apply the ink. And I would, I would advise against that, and that's because um, when the surface gets wet, it's a lot more difficult to exact any kind of detail. The ink won't really want to adhere. Um, it'll turn into something like a wet and wet technique for watercolor except your substrate will become unstable. So um, I don't recommend wetting it. However, if you are um, uh, using it in a process such as watercolor painting where you want to add and remove color uh, and you want to wet the board to uh, make that less predictable finish, then I would say spray the board. I think for this process, you don't want to do that, but I think that is the beautiful thing about clay board in particular, is that you can transform the substrate to, um, to change however you want that texture to go. Okay, so now we're just, this process is going to give us a lot of depth uh, just by adding in this extra color and then um, we're going to keep moving. All right. And don't forget, if you haven't already had a chance to check out our bundle page, uh, where you can find out um, more about all of the products that we're using uh, here in this presentation. And you can also enter to win our $100 Blick e-gift card. So don't forget to comment 
and let us know what your favorite subject is to draw or sketch. Um, maybe you do like to make creepy crawly insects um, and maybe uh, you like to paint butterflies. Um, so you like to draw and sketch butterflies. Um, let us know. Got some more questions. Awesome. Okay, we have some more questions. All right. Um, Alyssa is wondering if these acrylic inks bleed a lot. She has issues with controlling the bleeding with alcohol inks. Right. Um, what was our guest's name? I'm sorry. Alyssa. Alyssa is wanting to know uh, if these inks are going to bleed a lot. And um, I, I think that if you're using the colors together and they are still wet, that you definitely will get bleeding. Um, if you're using the colors one at a time once they're dry, which we'll demonstrate here shortly once we get through um, about halfway here, um, I, I think you will. I think there is um, something to be said about the timing when you are using these inks and just knowing um, when to proceed and when to pause and let it dry. And it's the same thing with watercolors and alcohol inks. So if you are out there and you've never tried acrylic inks before and you are um, a watercolor or an alcohol ink artist, I think this medium could definitely speak to you um, and could definitely bring another dimension into your artwork. Okay, so we're gonna just continue with our colors and I want to make sure um, that I'm moving quickly enough here so this is really um, you know these color schemes and subject matter are really an opportunity for you as the artist to um, experiment and um, Learn something new. We've got another question. Okay, great. Chris is wondering if since you're working on the right side and then the left, does the ink dry fast enough so that it doesn't get smeared, or are you just very careful? Uh, what was our friend's name? That was Chris. Chris wants to know, yeah, I think, I think there's a little bit of both, Chris. So um, uh, Chris is wondering, you know, if I'm working on one side first and then on the other, um, is this about the time, the drying times? And it definitely is. Um, I think we just want to, um, yeah, we want to give the ink some time to set up because if we apply all the ink, fluid and wet, uh, all at once, then uh, we are going to get a lot of ink traveling to places that we don't necessarily want it to go. But by establishing some of these um, uh, highlights and shadows right off the bat, we're giving ourselves an opportunity for the ink to dry um, kind of from the outside in is how I'm working. And I do think, um, I, I do think it's important to consider. It's really easy, especially um, using primary colors and we're using them all together. I think it's really easy to get muddy colors. Um, red, yellow, and blue will make brown and we're going to use them extremely carefully um, here in these next couple steps to do some um, color gradient and shading. So we'll get a little bit more into that and I think I'm gonna have to Maybe start stepping it up here in terms of time so that we can see. Do we have another question? Yep. Bill, awesome. Bill is curious um, if you seal this when it's finished, and if so, what type of sealer do you use? Yeah, Bill is wanting to know if this should be sealed when it's finished, and definitely you do want to seal this kind of work. Um, it is water resistant because it is acrylic, so you do have the added benefit of that. Um, however, if you're going to use a varnish, which um, I do recommend, I always like to use a spray varnish, gloss or matte, depending on 
the finish that you prefer. And you just want to hold that 6 to 12 inches away from your artwork once it's completely dry. And uh, you're going to spray a couple of even coats going in a couple different directions, making sure you get that even coverage. And that's it. Just let it dry. Maybe let it dry overnight um, after you spray it in a, a cool, dry place. And um, you should be good to go. It will um, help to make your piece more light fast. It'll just really help you out in general. So, and that's really what we want. All right, so now that we've got some shading, let's go ahead and add more color. I'm gonna use the blue. It's really a cyan blue. Um, definitely be aware that because these are pigmented, um, you might get some pigment friends in your nib, so just keep an eye out for that. I love that I can cover pretty significant areas with simple strokes, so I can work pretty quickly. Not that you always have to work fast, but gets the gets the job done. All right. And once we get about halfway, I've gone ahead and worked ahead for us so that we can put our finishing touches on here. So don't forget, if you haven't already, make sure that you enter to win our free $100 Blick e-gift card. It's coming your way. All you have to do is uh, comment and let us know what your favorite subject is to draw or sketch. In addition to liking our post and following us. Got another question. Okay, great. Happy to answer. Joyce would like Best to know how, ability. how deep can you carve the clay board? That's a great question. Um, pretty soon, we're going to demonstrate that. In fact, um, uh, you can carve as deep as to when you start to see the, um, get one that's not wet here. So once you start to see um, the board that is mounted to the cradle, hopefully you can see from where you are, um, you'll see that as a dark color. So you don't want to go digging in really deep because what you want, uh, what we're gonna use that process for is to bring out a highlight in our piece. So right now um, we're covering our bases with adding in this color and um, some of these shadows and uh, contrasting areas. But then at the very end, at some point, um, we are going to want to put in that highlight. And so we're going to carve away just minimally. Um, and again, you can do that using a lino cutter tool, uh, which I have and I've brought. And I'm excited to demonstrate that process because, um, you know, it's easy to be complacent with our substrate and the ampersand is so innovative. So when you have the opportunity to do something such as carve on your project board, I think it's, it's a worthy opportunity. All right, now let's add in our big bright colors um, and then we'll move on to finishing up and that carving process that we just discussed. So I'm gonna go back to using kind of a fluid painting process, but I'm gonna be super careful because I know that um, this ink really can go pretty far. Okay. And again, I'm just using the dropper as a really quick and easy way to cover a large area. And it's um, very much a fluid painting process. So all of our fluid painters out there, um, acrylic inks could really add some new dimension to your work, just like our, our watercolor artists and um, et cetera. Uh, and look at this, let's just get a little. Got another question? Okay, great. Um, what Meredith is wondering what you're doing with the nib before you change the colors. Are you rinsing it? Yes, I sure am. Um, 
you can't see it, but I just uh, have a little bucket of water here. Um, it's just plain water, and between colors, I am just um, rinsing in that bucket, and then I'm coming back to my handy paper towel stack, and um, I'm drawing just like I would on the board. I don't know if you can see when we s when we apply pressure, the nib opens, so the ink goes into this well and is slowly released by the nib, and that's where you get that line variation and pressure. So uh, it makes sense to keep it clean and keep that water moving through it uh, because it's going to act a lot nicer for you. Um, another thing I want to point out is um, the blendability of these colors. So um, a lot of you guys were wondering about what happens to the inks when they're wet and they're interacting and um, you know, are they going to bleed? What are they going to do? Um, they're going to blend, really, just like um, any other paint, but they're fluid. So um, you have a little bit of time to um, play around with what's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and cover these larger areas. Got another question? Okay, great. We have another question. Mary would like to know if this would work on watercolor paper or if it would work on anything else like canvas or... Um, what's our guest's name? Mary, Mary uh, wants to know if this technique uh, would work just as well on uh, canvas or watercolor paper. And uh, that might be... That might be debatable. Um, and the reason would be that um, because this ink is so fluid, it's really nice to be able to um, just manipulate it on the surface as a fluid paint, which we really we get to do here. Um, so I, I think if you, oops, 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 oops. pause. Um, <laughs> pause. Okay. So it's an opportunity. We're okay. We still have ink. Um, it's an opportunity to use the ink as a fluid. Don't do that at home. Uh, use a drop cloth and safety uh, equipment. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think you'll get exactly the same effect. You might be able to do some really interesting things, though. Um, you might be able to do marbling and um, uh, paint uh, wet and wet. You know, you can thin these down and you can use them um, similar to a watercolor. And this ink is, it's um, really, really given us. Okay, <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, I think that you can use the ink on those surfaces, I guess is my point. Um, but it won't necessarily be the same. So if you have an idea in mind, you know, of, of uh, the effect that you're going for and um, you want to try it or you want to get messy like we just did um, and do some fluid painting, I think that this is a fun opportunity to experiment. Um, just have fun with it and uh, see where it goes. Okay, couple last things here that we're going to do um, before we go on to our part two. Are we still in focus? Move it down. Okay, thanks for bearing with us, guys. We are live, so <laughs> that's... A lot of comments saying you handled it like a pro. Okay, well, that's great. I really appreciate that from our audience. That's a, a very supportive audience. We really appreciate that. All right, so we're just going to fill this in. And um, we were talking about uh, going back to the fluid painting process and talking about how to deal with this paint um, once it is dry. That's where um, things are going to get a little more interesting for us. So I'm just going to add in, because I think there's orange and there's red and there's blue, but we can just add in a little bit of shading on here. Okay, now I know you're thinking, 
when does this start to look like a scarab and not just a fluid painting? So once you get about to this point, continue to add your colors as desired. I like a nice multi-tonal finish. So very similarly to what we have here, I've taken it to the next level. I'm just gonna push this out of the way. I'm gonna bring our second board where things aren't fluid and moving around anymore. So make sure that you let that dry on a flat, even surface overnight if you can. Once you get to this nice final layer, again, it might take hour and a half to two hours to completely dry. Then we can go back in and tighten up everything that we've laid down here. So you can see um, I've taken some time to blend these areas um, so that my blue and yellow come together to make green, um, as well as some other blending, etc. So I'm going to add in and um, what I'm hoping that you see here is as we move along um, the drawings start to really clear up and um, become clarified on you know all the joints um, and um, all of these detail aspects and this can sometimes really be my favorite part of a painting is when you get through all the awkward stuff and you've finally figured out your process and you can just go through and lay down that detail line. I think it just helps to make it look nice and clear. And I can do that. And this is also the point where once it's dry, we can carve the board for our highlights. So let's get some of this detail worked in quickly with this nib. And also for all of you pen and ink fans, while we're getting close to almost wrapping up here, we do have a pen and ink competition happening right now. And in my opinion, October is the perfect time to draw and sketch, especially uh, creepy, crawly, or spooky things. So make sure that you take a moment to check out the pen and ink artwork challenge on our website and on our social media, uh, Instagram, Facebook, etc. cetera. And um, we would love to um, have your participation and see all the amazing artwork that you guys come up with this month. All right. Got another question. Awesome, we've got another question. Michelle's curious to know if you have any hints on how to open the bottle when the ink dries around the bottle rim. Um, she mentions that sometimes it, you know, gets crusted up. And What's our guest's open. name? Michelle. Michelle. Michelle wants to know what the secret is to opening up a bottle that has dried acrylic paints. Um, we've all been there. <laughs> um, talk about you know a jar of acrylic painting medium and that sucker is glued shut. Um, because that's what it is, it's an adhesive. So yes, it will happen that um, every once in a while you'll get a stuck uh, cap. And what I would say, Michelle, is um, to run that under hot water. And I know that that sounds like an old fashioned um, anecdote, but it absolutely works. It, um, it loosens up and makes the uh, substance more pliable. And before you know it, give it a couple of smacks on the bottom of the bottle after you uh, run it under hot, hot water and it will open right up. And that's just, uh, a good um, technique to know for all kinds of <laughs> containers and bottles. I know that um, that kind of thing can happen a lot. All right, great. Now I'm just gonna do one or two more colors because I just enjoy this so much. I'm gonna add in some of our detail. And this, um, you know, the cross hatching.
can really add a little bit of pop to your drawing. I even love just that little bit right there. Um, and I don't know how we're doing on time, but we might want to um, start wrapping up this part of the process here. Chris would like to know, is this all done with one nib or are you changing the nibs? Uh, Chris wants to know if we're doing this all with one nib or if I'm changing the nibs. And I'm doing this all with one nib, but I'm really glad that you asked that question. Um, so just because I'm doing this with one nib doesn't mean that you have to. In fact, if you are someone who um, absolutely loves to get that technical drawing detail, you will really enjoy the fine detail nib. This is actually the um, finest, I believe it's an EF. Um, uh, excuse me, check out our bundle page um, for these um, specific SKUs. But this is a nib that does not um, uh, open up as wide and um, has a narrower tip, so you're going to get a finer line. And I'll just demonstrate quickly because I think we're ready to start carving. I've got some fun cross hatching. You can take that to the next level if you want to and use that technique in your artwork. I highly recommend it. It's going to get you very far. So I'm just going to use the black. And I'm just going to show you um, this nice, it's just a really nice fine detail line. It's really easy to deal with. Um, so I'm not going to get um, as much variety necessarily as the other nib that I'm using, but there are plenty of options. If you're a hand letterer, calligrapher, um, watercolor artists alike, anyone who enjoys hand lettering or drawing uh, really on any level, I, I highly recommend this process, even if it's just for fun, um, because it's stunning. Okay, last step. Um, You've got your ink drawing down and it's dry. You've got your cross hatching. It's already spooky and creepy and I love it. Uh, I'm just gonna add some highlights. So um, I'm using a Blick Lino Cutter tool. You can keep the uh, nibs in the bottom there and make sure it's sealed up so that you don't lose them because we don't wanna lose them. I'm using the smallest gouge possible because I just want a little bit of highlight. I just wanna demonstrate. Let's just start on a small area. Boop, all right, I like it. So. If we want to just, and this is just a really, can you see that guys? Um, Tessa, can you see that? There we go. That's a little more. So just a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. And you can't see it. Hey, we've got a creepy crawly of our own here. Um, let's see if we can help this to show up for everyone. There we go. Now, just because I'm carving away doesn't mean I can't go back over it with a darker color. So don't hesitate. I even like a highlight right here. It's a little something, right? Um, not too much. And I especially like it on parts like the leg here where we're adding texture. So, if you're a, a drawing and sketching artist or a watercolor painter or everything in between, I think this looks good. I'm really happy with it. Okay, I'm getting the high sign, so I think it's time to wrap things up. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this beetle ink painting. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I think we have a winner for our $100 Blick e-gift card giveaway. And the winner is... Elizabeth Catalano Fusco. Elizabeth Catalano Fusco. Beautiful name. Congratulations. Um, you're the winner of a Blick $100 e-gift card. Um, I'm excited for you. Check out our website and our bundle page. Don't forget, um, if you didn't download this template, make sure you do it. Um, if not, you can find it later on our bundle page. Uh, please join us again on Thursday at 4 p.m. for our guest artist takeover with Tom Lynch. We'll see you there.